Hi, I'm Rio. Hi, I'm Zoe. We're and we're from Strawberry Army, and you're watching the Blurring Out with Eric Blair Show. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show coming to you from Comics, Tunes, and Toys in beautiful Tustin, California with identical twins, Rio and Zoe of the band Strawberry Army. How you guys doing today? We're doing it. <laughs> Makeup looks great today, girls. You. you did your full-on rock star thing. How long did it take you to get ready? Like five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> just really? put some glitter yeah. on her eyes and just kind of like gotta go with it full send it on your face well did you did you already have your foundation and your powder and everything done and then you came home and threw the glitter on um we like added on during the day like, yeah throughout the day yeah just just kind of going with we the mainly flow. only wear like eyeshadow and like lips and then that's it yeah cool. some blush look. and sparkles yeah, you guys just got back from San Francisco. Yeah. How was that trip? It was great. It was fun. You guys travel a lot. We do travel a lot. It's really fun. We might be going to Tokyo next year with the band, hopefully, God willing. And I know that you guys just celebrated a birthday, correct? Yes. yes. You're both, you both turned 17, yes. and you had this rager. I'm sorry, your whole life is on display. You understand that on Instagram, right? <laughs> yes. yes, we had a wig party. We had the rager Tell, wig party. Yeah, where did this yacht come from? Oh, oh that was our friend's yacht. Yeah, that was that was our friend. <laughs> that was our friend's yacht. Beautiful yacht. Mm -hmm. Well, after birthday celebration, with all the girls and the boys. Yeah. <laughs> Were there any parental units there to watch over you? There, there was, was like one. one parental unit. Who you knitted very well. Have you guys been to a prom yet? Um, no. I have like 17 hours of detention from not going to school a lot. So um, <laughs> I have to clear those if I want to go to prom this year. You really think that your parents would like ixnay the prom if you didn't get rid of those 17 hours of detention? Well, well like, the school wouldn't let us go for yeah, the clear detention. Oh, yeah. So but like we have like the ban and like modeling going on. So like. I don't know. It's and we don't like worries. excuse our absences because we have so many. We should really get on that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't even have that many when I was a kid and I was out of control. How did your parents meet? My mom went to go see my dad's show actually in San Francisco and she would go like drive down like every weekend from like San Jose. And he was like in this like band where he had like this accent and he was wearing like a kilt and like a mohawk and like he had like a British accent and like she was an artist so she would draw him like at every show and like little, little like comic strips She basically married like his stalker. And they got <laughs> married after two weeks of knowing each other. Engaged. Engaged. Same difference. And then they married Anyways. like a month later. And they're still in love and yesterday was their 21st anniversary so. Oh, is your mother a musician also? Um, no, she's mom's, not musically inclined. My mom models. Sorry, mom, love you. And my dad's the musician, <laughs> yeah, so my we dad, kind of got both. It, we kind of got, like, collided, like, both of their talents. You're identical twins, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, you guys spend a lot of time together? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're, like, inseparable. We're, like, best friends and, like, worst enemies, too, but we love each other. But also really? hate each other. Yeah. We, no, is, we love each other. What does being a worst enemy with an identical twin look like? Well, it's just like we know all of each other's like weaknesses because we're we hate so it too. close. Like something I would hate, she would hate. So like if I wanted to pick on her, I'd do something that I would hate and it pisses her off. Yeah. But like, I know it's exactly how like, to like... It's kind of like genius when... So like... Yeah. That was really awkward. <laughs> what was your childhood like growing up with your dad being a musician? And was that his main source of income? Yes. Um. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And also, we were always like, on the stage. Always yeah, we like definitely grew up like on the stage, going to our dad's going to shows, shows stuff, traveling yeah. with him. Yeah. So we never really had like stage fright because we were like up on the stage oh, since yeah. we were really little. Yeah, yeah. So it was like really easy to just. It just felt right to like start our own band because mm -hmm. I don't know. We've been around it our whole lives, so. What do you think your motivation is for doing music? Because you have all these options. Um, I'm really, I'm just like, I don't know. I feel like it's inside of me. I just like want to do music. I want to play it all the time. Like, it's just like something I've always wanted to do. I don't think it really started from my dad. It was like, I just always loved singing and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. it probably helped to grow up in like a musical like household. But like, yeah, I just like have always been like obsessed with it. And like, we've been singing like our whole lives and then like just went for it and stuff 
and it happened. What were your early musical influences? The Beatles, um, like Amy Winehouse. People always ask this. It's such like a huge like range of music from like, like, like it's whole, like literally everything. Nirvana, like the Beatles, like, like literally everything. everything. Yeah, we have a lot like of Motley Crue. Like it's just like such a ride, wide range yeah. of like music. It's definitely more inspired by like older stuff not like much rock like, and stuff more like rock and not very like punky pop. things i guess yeah definitely at what age were you discovered by the modeling agency vision la 14 yeah we were we, 14 we um signed with vision and that was really cool but like it was definitely slow and it's still slow because like you have to be 18 to do most things but we've been like really good with them and they're like like finally starting to like push this out and launch us into like that and we're like trying to get like mother agencies and like like milan and um other places and new stuff york and like stuff. new york yeah they've been really good they're awesome yeah um, they want us to do things through them so like if they have like sister agencies in different states or different countries then we would do it through vision instead mm -hmm. of just starting fresh and going somewhere else you know how do they watch over you guys and make sure you're not taking advantage of we have to send all of like if people will like reach out to us like on social media we have to send it to them first if it's like modeling wise like we have They've to send it to them filter through yeah. like because um, we get some creepy like, like weirdos like we can't like shoot with everyone like in the beginning when we first started modeling like anyone who would reach out to us or anyone who wanted to do a shoot like we'd say yes to because like but now since we're getting more and more like shoot opportunities like you really have to filter through and like make sure you channel your look because if you do something like and it doesn't fit your image it just like confuses what people are looking for so that's like something that's been like new because we're like turning down more and like really filtering for like what we want our look to be no pun intended so vision la has a vision for your vision as models yes, yes. <laughs> definitely <laughs> and what can, is that, can you define that is it the rocker do they want you to play per, be the rockers well they so back in the day like modeling was kind of just like if you have the looks or if you're like a certain height or something but now there's like so many like different varieties of like models all shapes and sizes and like they all like different things so like now you have to be like if you want to model you have to have something cool about yourself like it can't like just you be can be like a band be, like, or you can be like a good face, surfer you, know? or you can like do this do that like you can be like a, you know like anything like skateboarder like they really like things that like they're different you know so yeah they're looking for a niche yeah like you guys have to have a niche and you definitely do i mean you're twins i worked at a modeling agency and back in the day mm -hmm. that would get you a lot of work so far what have been your favorite modeling shoots or ad campaigns that you've done um I did some stuff with Yeezy, which was really cool. I really liked, there was one with like Pat McGrath, which is a really oh, yeah. fun oh, makeup that line really that we cool. really loved. Wow, mm -hmm. really? You awesome. worked with Pat McGrath? Yes. yes. And she did your makeup? She was, I, was she there? Um, It was like a whole team and like working on their new line. I think it's out now, but like, yeah, it was, it was a really cool to, because we kind of get all the behind the scenes before things come out. Like same thing with the Yeezys, it was just like, it was like really cool to see that so that's pretty epic have you guys seen the final draft um for some like those ones we didn't really get to see them because it was like just for like it was like exclusive like for like the companies but there's and another sometimes one. it's like them trying out what they might want to go in a certain direction so like some of them like don't always come out as products but like they're like oh let's try this and this and this and like see what we can create to like launch out there so it's just like I don't know. It's cool to see like the behind the scenes experience though. Yeah. Like I love it. Where do your parents draw the line? Like, look, we don't want our girls doing this. They've never really turned down something. Yeah. If our agency wants us to if, do it, then my mom will be supportive it, and especially, be like, especially like she'll drive us out there yeah. and everything. So yeah, if my like if my agency approves it, like my mom's like fine with it because she knows that they really filter through like all the creeps. Yeah. So like they wouldn't it's, like give us a sketchy shoot. So my mom always like is down to take us how would you guys define your relationship as identical twins best friends peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a pickle in it because there's a kind of a weird like you like i kind of hate you but i love you that was a really weird way to describe <laughs> it but i kind of understand it right. that's a good one like it's kind of just like we're like best friends but like it's just like a little like huh we just fight a lot about really and we're both really things. weird so it's just like 
<laughs> yeah, we're really weird. In school, were you guys ever bullied? Well, we we kind of both got bullied together, because <laughs> oh. like we we had um, scoliosis, so we had these like giant big pink back braces in from like school. all of yeah. middle school, like almost like beginning of high school. We still had to sleep in like back braces, and like we had like the headgear and like everything, and like it was like really that was a really rough. Patch it was we like. Yeah, it was a really rough patch for us. And people, at it really showed us who our real friends are, because <laughs> like those real friends who stuck through. It's just like, you know. What a- what age were you guys when that began and when it ended? Eleven, like 11 to fifteen. Thir- no, it was like eleven through like fourteen. Four- fifteen for me. So it's weird because her skeletal like system is like seven months ahead in development so that's why my t- like her teeth were like better than mine and then her back was worse than mine so like I had braces longer and then my back fixed before hers because I don't know it was like mine wasn't as bad Slight flex whatever yeah so <laughs> I ended like a year early and she still had to do it how did you guys deal with that it was like hard because like that was just such an awkward age, like middle school For already. It was like really hard. And then like we just had each other and that really showed us that like we have each other through this. And like, honestly it made, it was really humbling too. Cause like to go through that at like such a difficult, awkward time in life. And we have each other just really show we're always here for each other. It can happen to anyone. Honestly, I'm glad it happened. Cause it just showed me that things could be so much worse. So you guys have been changed forever by that experience. And this is something that a lot of people bring up with Instagram and Facebook yeah. and social media. Looking at the outside, nobody would ever think that. They would think, oh my gosh, these girls' lives are perfect. But you guys actually went through the fire and yeah. became stronger from it. Yes, yeah. it was like still recent, but it was like so long ago at the same time. We so like not really, uses. we've moved past it. And like, I really don't think about it a lot anymore. But when I think about, wow, that did happen. It's like, whoa, like we came yeah. a long way from that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's cool to kind of see us like grow and mature through that and become yeah. stronger. I honestly also got bullied when I started this band, like my sophomore year. Mm-hmm. It was before she was in it and like we were little cheerleaders and I was like, I don't wanna do stupid cheer. Like I wanna like make music and everyone was like, Oh my god, that's so weird and I was like, I wanna do it and Maria was like, No. Yeah, I remember I'm being so embarrassed. I was like And like don't do it. I had this, this I had band. this like guitarist and like she didn't really know how to play guitar, but she was like a sweetheart and like we were starting out and like we were like wrote a song and like recorded in my bathroom and put it on SoundCloud and like people would like tease us and like make fun of us at school and I was just there and like Rhea was so embarrassed of me and I was just like and I wouldn't like go to parties I would just like stay home and like write music and just like for like a whole year and then Rio joined the band and like we actually recorded I got like a new guitarist and like like filtered through other musicians to try to find like someone who can like capture the sound I'm looking for and it was just like like yeah I was like also really hard for that but now like we're here and everyone's like wow that's so sick and we're just like told you it's yeah. gonna work out one day <laughs> well i mean i think there's like a lot of, i mean this word's overused nowadays but i mean there are haters because they know oh my gosh those girls are gonna make it so stop them yeah. i mean <laughs> it's i mean it's true yeah people are haters gonna hate makeup must-haves and name them what foundation do you guys swear by okay so we don't use foundation because we feel like it makes us look really cakey my mom's always like show your skin while you have it like while it's nice if i use anything it'll be like a primer mm-hmm. or so like it just a, smooths it out or like a tinted a bb primer. cream it's like bb cream so it's like really light and thin versus like a full coverage like you like i just like to breathe especially on stage like if you have a full face of foundation on, it's like easy to break out. And it looks like you're like melting, like your yeah. face is like all like sweating. And like off. if you smile, you get the lines like. You kind of have that right now. You do too. You. <laughs> Sorry, we were laughing too hard. <laughs> okay. What BB cream? Um, um, I think it's literally just called BB cream. I think it's literally from like it's Rite from, like, Aid. It's from like Rite Aid. Yeah. Okay. Like drugstore makeup is literally like I swear by it because like it's so easy to replace, especially if you're like really clumsy and break everything like me. Me too. A powder. Um, that's like a harmonized um yeah that was kind of cool harma hum harmonized <laughs> um honestly yeah like drugstore drugstore i don't um, really wear powder but i probably should because i probably look like a greasy fish every time i leave the stage but if i use anything i'll use like a translucent powder so it's clear so it doesn't look like orange powder mm-hmm. that's like 
the worst look lip liner not lip liner liquid lipstick lip gloss what do you guys prefer definitely glosses and lipsticks i really love like bright colored lipsticks it's i don't really, really go for like purples because like i think lighter colors and like like a red or like pinks like look better especially with our like bleached like, hair i feel like it washes out yeah when we're, like, if dark, you were like dark lipstick like it just, just, just looks scary. scary it's just like whoa <laughs> But I like the pinks, the reds, and the then, light tones, the fun. Then I'll just wear, like, lip gloss on a normal day. I honestly don't really wear makeup on normal days except, like, blush. I love blush. It's not like you really have to wear makeup, right? Okay. So, and then what, tell me what companies, though, what do you swear by as far as these lip glosses and lipsticks um, go? Glossier or Glossier. Pat McGrath. Pat McGrath, definitely. Urban Decay. Um, don't you, like, um... What's it called? Uh, like Tarte or something? Tarte? <laughs> Tarte. <laughs> I don't know. Is it Tarte? I don't know. That's That'd be really, really embarrassing if I've been calling it Tarte this whole time. That's awkward. What about what about the Jeffree Star stuff? What do you think of that? Um, um I love watching his videos. I do. I just, I honestly like rather spend my money on like sushi than like a really expensive highlighter palette because honestly it's all the same like you're paying for like the name versus like the product because but i i do swear by glossier because like it's just like so simple like it's like the makeup list like makeup look kind of it's like they have like really natural lipsticks and stuff like one coat looks natural the more you apply it gets darker and then like the blush and like it's all just so like natural and simple i love it do you guys have a skincare regime that you do every day um, um we use uh what's it called clear Clearasil, like face wash and, and then like and cerave oh, that's, cool. that's that's it just like yeah wash her face i guess we don't really have like first and then and then and, like we usually just like wash her face and moisturize yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely moisturize get really dry when we don't do that how would you describe your fashion sense vintage Everything. Vintage. We rarely shop at like places where other people can get them. Yeah, I really like the hunt for like vintage stuff. It's just like, and I also like. I know this kind of sounds rude, but like when people say, "Oh my God, where did you get that?" I love being able to say like, "Oh, like I thrifted it," so then like no one else can get it because I, I don't know, like Brandy Melville and like Urban Outfitters and like all those stores that are all really in and stuff. It's just like, it's so cute. Like don't get me wrong, but I just don't like having the same things as people like, i like being like different like my own thing like we're definitely the same on that what are your <laughs> hopes and dreams for strawberry army girls i just really want to get my message out there and my like everything like i love doing i love playing music i love singing i love writing mm -hmm. and it's just really really cool feeling when people know your songs or like they know of you and like you get like your message out and it's like it's cool yeah the way i think about it this sounds really stupid but like my mom always says like you have to like like your mind is like a cup and like life like throws you all these opportunities and like it'll fill up but if you don't have enough like a big enough cup it'll overflow and you'll lose it all so like just have a big cup that you can fill like endlessly to the top and like just have this goal in your head and you can go for it I don't know that's just some I don't know my cup is big and endless and I want to go all the way or however far God wants me to, part of the plan. Just want to get my message out there and make music that people like. Rio, when did you pick up bass? So my dad, he makes basses as a little hobby. He's really good at it. Is that one of his <laughs> custom basses that you play? Yes. And he's also like a professional bass player, like when he's not doing his Mick Jagger's tribute stuff. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I kind of just got that from him. So I, I started playing stand-up bass in sixth grade. Wow. And like I was like trained on stand-up and then like I got into high school and I didn't want to play stand up anymore, so I joined like the jazz band, but I had to like learn how to play electric. So I was like, Dad, can you make me a bass? And then the first day of ninth grade, I just picked it up and it was kind of hard to learn. I, it's way easier for me to play stand up bass, which people are surprised, but it just comes easier to me because I learned it first. But yeah, I've been playing that for like three years, so. And I taught myself how to do that, so. Yeah, you're exceptional. You really are. Because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a bass player. Well, I was a bass player in my punk band. Um, and yeah, you're exceptional. Thank you. Yeah, you are very gifted. Your tone, you really got your tone together. 
And that is that something you worked on? Did you work on your tone? You didn't just buy some box that gave you a tone. No, no. I just I just play, and people are like, "Whoa!" And I'm like, "What? Like, what? <laughs> What's wrong?" Huge. People are like, "Oh yeah, your hands look like they're gonna break when you're playing the bass because they're like so tiny and like fragile." Besides your father, who kind of influenced your bass playing style? I mean, from starting off playing fretless stand up to electric who kind of influenced you my fingerings and everything is like really weird because like i was trained on the stand-up like that really helped me like playing jazz music and like walking and like improvising and stuff is something i like doing but i feel like that's kind of helped me but i don't really have a specific like person that i'm influenced by hey, but and you can play guitar too um yeah i was also i also started playing bass like when she did but I didn't try out in eighth grade. So yeah, that ship sailed for me. But then um, I started out the band playing bass when, and I was like singing and then playing bass. But then like like before she was in it and then like I needed her help and I was like, you're way better at this, like you're in jazz band. But yeah, I also play mediocre guitar. I wish I was better, but I just like don't practice like at all. My boyfriend thinks I'm good, so. How would you describe the Strawberry Army sound to somebody who's never heard it before? Um, like, like alternative sur surf punk, punk, I guess. Some people say like indie. There's been like various people that have been like, oh, it sounds like this, but if you do something like this, like if you go in a popper, popier direction, oh, like yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. like mm -hmm. get more fans or you'll get more like people that will notice you and stuff and like people have like told us to like yeah. change. I don't really care if people will like it better. I just want to make what I want to make. We don't really care what people think. <laughs> Lots of people do care like what they're putting out there. I just really like putting what's in my heart and what I want to portray myself as an artist out there, which is like kind of rare these days. You book your own shows, you write your own music, you play your own instruments. You come from a musical family, so your father is like dialed you in on what's going on. And I mean, who does that at your age? Honestly, n not like anyone. So it's like, I don't know. Sometimes it is hard to kind of like because everyone's talking about like that. college and stuff and where they're gonna go and, and we're like not what going they're going right do. away because we're gonna travel the world for modeling and music and like see where that takes us. I love my friends, but they're all just like, oh, this party tonight and blah blah blah. And I'm like, I have a show. Like I'm doing this. I'm recording. Like. I'm practicing, like I'm writing music and everyone else has like, oh, so-and-so said this and that. And it's just like kind of a different high school experience almost. Yeah, we haven't really been able to experience like the full like normal high school. Like, Cause we're like gone a life. lot from modeling a bit. Like, but I honestly I, wouldn't I'm have it super, any other way. Yeah, I, like, I love it. I, I wouldn't change and go I'm back. Like, and so blessed to have this happening and these opportunities in the place we live and like how young we started and just like how we already like figured out like the sound that we want to go in and we already have like albums out and stuff it's just like I'm really glad that we have like the support group and like our friends are also a good support group even though they don't really get it sometimes but like yeah it's it's great we're just really lucky. Zoe, are you influenced by any rock stars vocally? Definitely a little, no doubt, like Gwen Stefani and people say Blondie like Deborah Harry. I used to like take vocal lessons when I was little because I've always had this super low like raspy voice yeah. and like I couldn't sing like other kids my age. I would take vocal lessons from like this lady and she like would tell my mom like, oh, your daughter can't sing. Like if she ever wants to sing, she has to get her tonsils removed. She needs like serious help if she ever wants to take this professionally. We never went back and now I'm like lead singer of a band. So like, honestly, yeah, you just have to go for it. I don't know, I definitely have a different sound than everyone else, which honestly I always hated, but I guess it's working to my advantage. People are always like, oh, I love your like raspy voice. I'm just like, you would do anything for like a little like cute, like mouse voice. No, but I think that's what makes you unique and sets you apart from all the other female vocalists that are part of the scene. You don't have this high voice. You have like this real mature sounding voice. Where do you want to see Strawberry Army in five years? World tour. Dream big. Yeah, let's, right now. Let's play the freaking forum. I want to go all the way for sure. Right now our biggest like fan base or whatever is in Brazil. I definitely want to go to Brazil and see. But I definitely want to get more like worldwide yeah, it's <laughs> not too. just one country. For some reason, we have like thousands of like <laughs> Brazilian fans, and we're grateful. Eu te amo. Yeah. We have like all the right materials to do it, and like the right timing. We just have to like keep working hard and see where it takes us. Now that you're 17, do you have an increased sense of control over your lives? Being one week into 17, <laughs> I definitely feel. Um, 
No, not at all. I feel the exact same. <laughs> I mean, I definitely feel more mature than I was at the start of this band, but we still don't drive because we're like we're Slacking. really like procrastinating, and um, did you say that word wrong? Procrastinating. <laughs> Anyways, she clearly hasn't matured, but I have many levels you no. have uber and lyft so you yeah. don't really have to worry we uber everywhere <laughs> that's our next song no, our friends honestly drive us everywhere which yeah. might get annoying but we love them for it now that you're kind of like these indie rock stars how do you know who your real friends are um they've just been there the whole time like there are some people that like weren't that nice to us and then they come back like oh my gosh like hi like i love you like yeah, i missed you especially and you're like it was Wait really interesting to see like when we had scoliosis all the people that were like oh my god like and even the people and now they're all like oh my god yeah and even the people like <laughs> like kind of like teasing us or giving us crap for like starting the band in the first place are now like oh it's so sick like i loved like the show like and you? everything no so well yes <laughs> but it's okay <laughs> so you just called me out <laughs> It wasn't like that, okay? It wasn't like that. I felt like that. I was just embarrassed. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'm a hypocrite. I'm not even going to say it. It's fine. You said a hypocrite? <laughs> How committed are you to the other members of Strawberry Army? Very committed. They are awesome. They really... They've been like our fifth or sixth drummer and guitarist. Yeah, because like no one can really channel the sound we want and we're kind of picky. But they're really good <laughs> they at... They are um, really good and they become like our family like I love them they're I can't imagine having any other drummer yeah. and guitarist and they're so funny they're the coolest guys who would you say a strawberry army fan is my dad yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say the same thing literally to every show my grandpa he, for sure he got like a custom like we have like merch out and like he like ordered like a custom shirt like on the website and he got like this like long sleeve like baseball tee like this like neon orange and white shirt and he wears it like everywhere to like church I'm to like he's not wearing the right store now. i know why isn't he wearing it right is he wearing it right now <laughs> probably my it sounds dorky really but like i love yeah. like my dad's such a role model such an inspiration too. like i he's taught me like so many things and like it's really nice to see him like support us and love it as yeah, much as we love with doing my it mom. she's like our momager like she she really helps a lot too because yes. like she's freaked out she's like you girls are minors and we're like yeah we know what did your mom teach you about beauty um the less makeup the better i went through like a really heavy makeup phase and yeah she, she helped went me get out the of donald that. trump powder phase <laughs> i literally had an orange face and like school. no like no mascara and like an orange face and like just caked and she was like i was still figuring it out and she was with her, like her little cheer uniform and her like whole so body wait. would be white and she would look like a carrot and everyone was like so wait, this, isn't, like, <laughs> this isn't attack rio days though it was cute did she teach you about the beauty inside um definitely yes she always says make sure your heart is golden because beauty fades mm -hmm. on the outside her and my grandma they really were like well my grandma was a huge role model in my life she just taught us make sure you're good on the inside kind like can shine from the outside so what are you trying to communicate to your audience um, um just, just music that yeah, people can relate, relate to because i was gonna say that and sorry because totally like, i wanted to say it because like, you've been saying everything but like <laughs> you stole it from my head that wasn't cool Boop. Boop. but yeah it's just really cool like having people like relate to music because i know for me and for like most people like the best music is songs that like people can listen to and be like that's what i'm going through i can relate to that we were trying to like create music that we can relate to and have other people yeah. relate to and on a different yeah. side to that that people can have fun to like i don't think anyone can relate to like melancholy burger you know i just want people to have fun and like enjoy the music and like relate to it and like connect to it on like some weird way or, like make memories to it all of the songs that i wrote and all their titles have something like very like special to me orange box is about my guitarist like wi-fi password like my old guitarist melancholy burger was like my first boyfriend like we broke up and like because like i don't know it was Did just like get in and out right after you guys broke up and like you were something crying and like it was just like sad and like i don't know they're all just like a quirky way of my like me expressing myself orange box 559 it was literally a wi-fi password orange box 559 okay, when okay. Look, is this so going to, to go away? My teeth are starting to decay. Sorry. 
Remind my dear for the oh. delay. Here, I'm on. not having you. it today. <laughs> Orange <laughs> box 559. Orange <laughs> box 559. Girls, which of these rules did your parents teach you and how well do you follow them? And I'm going to start off with pick up after yourselves. <laughs> oh, God. Still struggle with we that We are one. the messiest we are, people. We are, we are complete slobs. slobs. Yeah. And we just throw things everywhere. We can walk the room and leave a tornado behind us. But sometimes when we're we in a love to clean. Sometimes. Like we're obsessed with it. Honestly, we clean. We're in like a cleaning mood like once every like week. Month. So, month honestly we're sometimes it's we not like, like disgustingly like disgusting but like i don't know my mom's always like she's like pick up that bugging shoe. us for that and we're like oh because as soon as we walk in the first thing we want to do is rip off our shoes and go lay on the couch and especially like, shoes like this yeah we're always wearing crazy shoes yeah that would be uncomfortable we leave our one. makeup out we leave it's okay so if we live together by ourselves like a year from now like when we like Port move out alive We'll edition. literally be on like a hoarder's show. Just like, kidding. Not even kidding. No, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be we're fine. fine. We yeah. don't hoard stuff. We're just slobs. Hey, make amends when you hurt someone's feelings. Um, <laughs> like with everyone else, but with yeah, us too. With us, we're like, no, I'm not apologizing. Like we're nice to, to everyone else, but like for us, we're really petty. Yeah, because like it's kind of like a twin thing. Like also, again, like going back to the mess thing. Like even though we share all the clothes, like we're like. I'm not putting that away because you wore it last. Like, no, you wore it last. And then we like, leave it for so long like, we forget who wore it. And then it just becomes like a fight. But then we eventually just do it. Did your parents teach you tell the truth? Do you follow that? Um, Definitely. Especially, like, I don't really hide anything from my parents at all. Like, I'm really, like, open and honest with them because we're, like, really close. I'm, yeah, I don't really lie, like, a lot. That wasn't a lie. See, I said a lot. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just have to. Like, Sometimes I lie Did you like, lie eat that like, cookie? Like, no, I swear I never saw it. Or when you said it was your chocolate, but it was definitely the family chocolate that you just ate and said you bought it. Or, you, or you, no, you said you're... <laughs> okay, she was eating a whole chocolate bar, and I definitely saw it in the cupboard earlier, so I thought it was, like, up for grabs. So I was like, can I have a piece of that? And she's like, like, no, my, no, boyfriend, my got boyfriend got it for me from, like, Switzerland or something. I was like, when it's did... A, it's at Switzerland. And I was, like, I was like, when did Carter go into Switzerland? You're like, like, two weeks ago. And no, she was I like, said you got it from... So then I texted no, Carter. No, you are lying. No, you then are I texted lying Carter. No, no, no. Then I texted Carter, and I was like did you go to switzerland and get some chocolate <laughs> and he was like no why and so i got so mad because i, I just don't want to share her. like i just want it for myself okay like i deserve chocolate like, sometimes i'll like white lie about like ditching school or like skipping yeah, she's a class kind of, like, bad like that she's like bad she's like not that. close with the parents okay. i'm yes i am i'm way closer with the parents okay you guys are gonna have to take that up with yourselves you knock on closed doors before entering no <laughs> no, Catalina. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we always barge in because we're well, so we like because we're always we like together. Everywhere. So like so it doesn't really matter. We're always just like the whole. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you love most about your parents? That they're still in love and that they still have so much love to give to us. Even though like it can be d difficult with four daughters, and they like still are so like understanding and patient with us, and like they're still in love. Like that's that's crazy like i don't know for like 21, 21 whole years. years of like basically like getting engaged as strangers like and raising this family through struggles and through great times they're just still kids in yeah. their hearts i just want that one day what i love is that like i can just relate to both of them so much because like i get all of like my music like talents and stuff from my dad and like he's such like a role model for me and he's so inspiring and like encouraging and supportive and I love to like have that like supportive person in my life because not everyone has that like like some people want to be musicians and some people want to start bands and like their parents are like no you're gonna be a lawyer like me or like you're gonna do this or like they're not supportive so it's like really really comforting to have like a dad like a father figure that will just like be so supportive with all of that and also like modeling my mom totally understands that she's helped us with that a lot and like she knows like everything about it because like she like grew up doing it too so mm -hmm. it's just cool to like have it's, such support yeah it's parents. really awesome to have like the support team from like my whole family so what did your father teach you about the music business um definitely that there's like a lot of creeps out there and like that it is like a um, still a man's industry and that like we need to change that like my mom says that too like like, it's just, like, so, like, oh, like, oh, you're, like, a girl and, like, a band. Like, we're, like, the girls of the scene, which is, like, 
which is cool that like we're doing it but I like it's always so fun to yeah. like play with other girl musicians yeah. especially like like even in the modeling industry it's the same lots of like guys in the industry are like, creeps you know it's just like promoters and people reaching out to us to do shows it's just so like, male dominated one time we played this show in Santa Ana and this guy came up to me he was like oh you guys are pretty good I mean for like a bunch of girls yeah and, and I, then, I literally just looked at him and I was like what yeah. and there like, was like what? there was another Excuse time me. where um I think it was like the sound guy and like we finished playing he's like oh you guys were actually like good like I thought you guys were just gonna stand up there and look pretty or something <sighs> and I was literally just like I don't know if I should like thank him or like punch him or like cry or like <laughs> I don't know I, don't I was know. just confused just, like, there's obviously been girl bands for a while but they're still rare especially like in this scene they're more female fronted bands that are really pursuing it and really like, getting out there and like yeah. going not even up against all the guy bands but just like being up there with them yeah. it's like a badass thing yeah we're doing this too like that show oh we're like headlining it and like showing other girls that they can do it too it used to just be all guys and like that's cool but it's just really cool to start seeing like more women yeah do it definitely because i feel like, like it's always been like a guy like, thing oh, you, give, you gave me the confidence to like start singing or like start doing this or like start like trying to record my music or like go like write songs and i'm just like that i'm so happy like for me, I didn't really have anyone to look up to to do that, like, because I was by myself, like, even without Rio, and, like, I didn't know how to do it, and my dad, like, had this whole, like, his own way to think of it, like, back in the day, how things worked, and I just, like, really had to figure it out by myself and just, like, really, like, look up to, like, older, like, L.A., like, girl bands that are, like, probably, like, 25, like, 30, but, like, I was just starting it all alone in like a different genre and it was just like hard at first but I'm so glad that I stuck with it and I pursued it and like I just kept like pushing through. I wanted to like do something and show girls that they could do it too because it was just like it was, it was really hard starting out. Favorite rock star fashion trends from the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. I love fishnets. I love everything like 60s outfits like 60s housewives like dresses and like little vintage pieces that we can find um i definitely love like the hairstyles like the beehives and like the bumps and like the high ponies and like teased go -go hair go-go boots, sure. go -go boots yeah definitely all the like little go-go girl like stuff like outfits and stuff like mesh and it's cool to just like experiment with like all like different kinds of clothes and like mix and match and like kind of create your own like kind of fashion sense through like all the eras go go boots for sure like for 60s stuff like bright like neon colors and like tights were really in i'm just like really influenced by that and like all the like big like floral prints and stuff definitely the 60s and 70s honestly 70s were great but that's just more what i wear on like a normal day versus like shows like just like wide leg like vintage pants and like I don't know tube tops and just like blue eyeshadows and stuff in the 80s like definitely the hair was very out there but 80s is really cool too with the fishnets and like all the sparkles I love that and then definitely 90s is what I also wear like on a yeah. normal day like dickies like baggy pants just like more of like what I would wear to go skate or go like hang out you know yeah. I feel like our outfits are influenced by like a little bit of every era. Definitely a little 2000s too. What was it like to have iconic DJ Rodney Bingenheimer play your song Clementine on his Sirius XM radio show Underground Garage? The first time we heard it on oh, the radio and all we had all of our friends listen because we're like we might get played tonight like we probably won't but like just listen just in case and like all of our friends were sending us videos and like calling us and like it, it was... was I was, was like, epic. we're literally being played on the radio right it now. It was like, such we a were great feeling. So excited. <laughs> like, we also ended up playing um, Eight Legged Woman and he played Little a, a lot of our Kitty songs, like Wasabi too. Leg, like Wasabi he's, Leg. He's played like a bunch. He's played a bunch, and it's like, at first I didn't really get it, but like my dad like told me stories because like he was like in that era too, and like for all of that like he was like this is like incredible this is such a big deal like he made so many stars and like I know that like industry has changed because no one really listens to the radio anymore because you can stream but like he was like back in the day if 
Ronnie played you, you would make it. Cause that was like the biggest channel. Like everyone listened to the radio. Like that's how people like discovered people. So it was like really like an honorary experience to like be able to meet him and be able to be played yeah. on this show. We went to like his birthday party yeah. at um, Cantor's. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he had his like little special booth and it was it was cool. We saw like cool. Frank Infante from Blondie and like all these like cool like stars that like we've all looked up to and like like you know and like seeing them in person when they're all like old oh, and like oh, it was cool. It was crazy. like wow, like all these like legends like are like in our present and like now we're like we're the ones that rising up and it was it was just cool. It was really yeah, it was, it was so a really cool fun. experience. What inspired the cover art for your twenty eighteen EP Citrus Grove? I actually designed it. I just like made a collage like of a bunch of different pictures online. Citrus Grove I like chose that name because like of Clementine. Clementine was our single, so the yeah. citrus thing is kind of like a Clementine for the name. And then the cover art, she found like a little orange field, a and orange then grove. found a little yeah orange grove, citrus grove, and then, <laughs> um, a little it's person kind of a weird in the name. front. Honestly, if I would have released that now, I probably would not have named it Citrus Grove, but just a part of it what is the symbolism of the girl with the gun the with barrel i added a little daisy which mm -hmm. means like peace coming out of the i guess like coming out of the barrel so um it was it was honestly around like a lot of the shootings last year like mm -hmm. the school shootings and it was like it really like impacted me because i like wrote those songs like around that time mm -hmm. and so like I found this picture of like the girl with the gun like on a totally different thing and I was like I can really make this like also a thing of peace like I don't know I just like kind of so used like, it like a little that flower way. coming out of like the gun yeah. and like because mm -hmm. in the 70s at protests like people would like put like mm -hmm. empty guns in the barrel like for protests and like and the war and stuff so it was just like I don't know that really impacted me because it was like such a tragic thing and like that was going on and like our worlds and our society that I just wanted to like make a statement. The songs off your 2018 EP Citrus Grove, the inspiration for the lyrics and we're going to start off with Clementine. That was a love song kind of. It was kind of a love song but it was kind of like kind of like mad like you're not really getting all the answers and you're kind of just like is yeah. this working out or is there something you need it's to tell me? It's kind of just a like, state of confusion but like like I don't know what I want but I know that I like want you like with me like don't I don't know that was just me figuring out boys for sure. Live strict. That song is definitely about kissing, for sure, but it's like almost under a trance, like, like, just kind being of like the girl is like, it, the girl is very, like, supposed to be very, like, powerful, powerful. and the guy's like, kind she of has just, a like, poison kiss. And he like, has, like, she has him, like, it's basically like girl power, like, girls in charge, like, and the guy's kind of like a little puppy dog following her around. Yeah. Callback. Callback was actually about this really boyfriend I had where like I was so sick of it and like he was just treating me different and treating me like bad and not giving me time but I was just like still waiting for a callback still waiting for the attention like, like you were over it but like I don't still... like you but like please just like love me and make everything better but like it obviously didn't work out leather shoes this one is about like this guy like the first guy I ever liked and he had these leather shoes and like it was about heartbreak because he definitely played me I was just like a little freshman and like I had no idea what I was doing and like yeah, I just like, I don't know. That one was about getting heartbroken for the first time. Do you know an eight-legged woman? This one is oh, this one's a good one. also a badass like story, like like a badass woman. I'm like a poet, so I like write stories in my head, I guess. And so like, this one's about like, um, this guy cheated on her with this girl, and she like found out, and like, basically is like, okay, like you're done, like, poison venom of a spider, like. She is the spider. She's gonna get you. You better be scared. Okay. So what inspired the lyrics to the songs off your 2019 EP Red? You already talked about Orange Box 559. Yeah, so first guitarist Wi-Fi password. Yeah. And we we're like, what's the Wi-Fi? And this was like before we like had any songs. This is before I was in the band, yeah. but I've heard the story so many times. She just said Orange Box 559 and I was like playing like something on the bass and she said it and I was like Orange Vox, five, fifty, and, and then we just started jamming around, it, and then, then we're like, okay, yeah, let's make it a song. Nice, yeah. I love it. That's a good one. Wasabi Leg. Um, so 
another funny story. I spilled wasabi on my leg, and I just wrote in my notes, and then I just... That's Did you spill wasabi, like, on your notes, too? And you're like, what should I call this one? No, it literally, it was, like, literally, it looked like a green, like, bird turd on my leg, and it was all ew, wasabi. It was ew, so I had to go on a date after that. It was really bad. Ew, why didn't you just change your pants? Because they were so cute. I could not take them off. Like, literally, they oh, were... there's a green bird turd on them. Okay, well, it was the wasabi leg, and a song was born from it. Melancholy Burger. That one is about, um, <laughs> I've had a lot of, like... Guys. I'll tell this story. <laughs> yeah, you okay, can tell yeah. it's about Jagger. Oh, oh, take oh my gosh. Okay, so basically they broke up and then they went to In N Out Burger for some reason. Like, why would you break up with someone and then go get food? We were hungry and <laughs> So I guess she was like crying. Like, I've heard this story so many times and it's like really hilarious to me because like it meant so meant. <laughs> it meant so much back then, but like now we oh, look back at it and it's like. <laughs> But, like, anyways, like, I guess she was, like, crying while she was eating her burger. And it's like, melancholy burger. Why are you so sad? <laughs> You're, like, singing to your burger. But, like, also, like, the burger was you in a way. But, like. No, but it was also him. It was, like, because, the like, burger, her, and This is also him. kind of about him because, like, um, I don't know. It was, it's kind of, this part's kind of deep. Like, the, don't call me your dad. It was, like, he was also, like, that's why we broke up. Because he was having, like, dad issues, which is really sad. But, like. He gave me consent Daddy for that lyric. And now we're like really good friends. Little Black Kitty. That. Little Black Kitty. I like writing songs. Like everything is like always a love song or this and that. Like, which is good for like music. But I always also want like something different. Like not everything has to be about a boy or like, yeah. like drugs or like money or whatever. It's just like. And the cool thing about like Little like, Black Kitty is that like you can interpret it, it, it in can like mean a, a bunch of different things. Like it can be about like someone spirit. else, or it can actually be about a cat, or it can just be like whatever you want yeah. it to be. I just it's like, not like I don't know. I really like the imagery and like yeah. the things I write. And it's like, not like just too like it. specific, where like it actually you know what I mean. So you can interpret it how you want yeah. to. So I feel like everyone kind of like experiences it differently because we're like quirky. Like ah. this is your speed round, girls, and I want you. To, yes. So you need to think quickly on your toes. Were there any parental precepts you rebelled against as children? Um, we never sports people. We always try to like be forced into like tennis and soccer and sports and we were literally like I remember we had like our first soccer game when we were like five or six years old and like Zoe had like th the ball and she was going straight towards the goal and there was no one else around she literally could have had like a clear shot like without she could have had a goal and then she walks she runs all the way and turns at the last second with the ball runs through like five other like fields chasing a butterfly and I, I remember caught it too. I was and like, I remember I was like, that oh moment in time. I was like, okay, we're definitely yeah, we're, not yeah. sports people. And my mom was kind of bummed on that. She's like, like, dang it, like I was never a sports person. Like, yeah, my mom was forced to do soccer like, oh, when she was little. They'll never too. be able to live that dream. That's almost like mine, mine, mine. <laughs> Where did you find your self confidence during your teenage years? Well, you're a teenage, but you know what I mean. Um, definitely from Rio. Like we would definitely boost each other up. I For cannot sure. imagine going anywhere without her. Like, yeah. I'm so, like, Definitely. fortunate. Like, like, I can't imagine going to, like, a party. Like, I don't know how I'm going to go to, like, Eric's without you tonight. Yeah, like, we, we go everywhere with each other. Like, we literally and, like, just have to be together all the time. Like, yeah. Or we feel insecure. But in a just, way... Like, almost, like, naked. Like, yeah, empty. in a way, it kind of sucks, though, because I feel like when I'm not with her, there's only, like, half of me here and, like, half of me is, like, missing. So it's, like, really hard to, like have that, like, independence because I'm yeah. super dependent of Zoe. So it's, like... like, like kind of, like build our confidence off of each other like together we're, we're just like, like one together. powerful person so, like if we're like standing alone in a corner like at least i'm staying with her yeah we'll and if we're left we and, like if i'm left out like we're both left out so it's kind of like we're like alone but also together we're both christians we believe in god and definitely and we just have to give it all to him Jesus is savior what brings you the most peace in your life right now my boyfriend and my family yeah i just i feel like i have to be like happy with myself before i can be happy with like anyone else so I feel like self-love is like really important for me right now. I've been working on that a lot because I just got out of like a long relationship. But don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just feel like you have to be at peace with yourself before you can be at peace with anyone else. So I've really been giving myself time to like love myself. If you could fix any one injustice in the world, what would it be? Violence. That, that was the quickest answer ever. <laughs> Honestly, I think complete peace on earth like i've seen a bunch of like utopia like movies where it's just freaky and everything goes wrong 
So even though violence like sucks, I would definitely like want to end like world hunger and like starvation and like sickness for sure. Like people's health, like that would be like, I know some people are like, oh, like it's just the way like natural selection, but like there's like people starving everywhere. Like we do like a lot of like um, community service and stuff. And so, yeah, like I want to, that, that's like a really big issue for me. Like like the homeless and yeah, like Yeah, definitely. The, like coming coming back from San Francisco, it was just like, yeah. it's just insane. It was heartbreaking. Like it's just heartbreaking. And like, I can't even imagine other places in the world where they don't even have running water. Like, yeah. Like, yeah it really made just, me realize how like lucky we are and how like grateful I am to like yeah. have the life that I have. And I just want to help others too, you know. So what would you guys like your legacy to be? Legacy. Mm. What do you mean by legacy? Like really? legacy, like like, like uh, Fleetwood Mac, Boston, <laughs> Sex Pistols. You're singing Fleetwood Mac. That is a legacy. The fact that you guys are 17 and you're singing that song, that is a legacy. So what would you like your legacy to be? I also want to inspire right. other people that like want to start a band young because it's like, you know, it's it's hard. Like that time in your life, like all your peers are like doing different things and doing sports and doing like college stuff and like doing like a bunch of like homework and everything, yeah. and, like being really good students. And like, you don't need that to be a musician. You don't need that to be yeah. in a band. So like, and I just want yeah. to give yeah. kids and like younger people more confidence to be like, look, we did it. Like to you can do it too. Yeah, especially to never be afraid and like don't care what people think. Cause like, honestly, if you just go for it, then I don't know. It's just like, you really just have to go with your heart and go with your gut. Don't care what people think. I know, like, it's hard at first. Like, it's always going to be hard, but, like, it doesn't matter. Like, if you want to do it, just go for it. How would you define the word love? I feel like there's types of love. It's true. Definitely, like, love like, is seeing something and, like, like, being drawn to it or, like, hearing something. It can be, like, sense or, like, sight or, like literally anything yeah, love, like love yeah. can definitely mean a lot of things but it does come from like a connection you have with something or someone or like somewhere it's just like a connection you feel you feel like comfort you feel sure. like close and it's a safe warm fuzzy feeling and like you can relate to it too in a way what one life event of yours would you change if you could relive it actually scoliosis really helped me it made me stronger maybe um actually no scoliosis so definitely not want to live through that even though it made me stronger it'd make my life a lot easier to just like not have to deal with that at all it would save a lot of like sadness and a lot of like pain and just a big chapter of our life was uh kind of robbed from us we had to like be up in like san jose like at like physical therapy for like months at a time and like yeah it was awful like that sucked but i feel like it did shape me into someone so i wouldn't necessarily want to like um like just not go through that because it definitely made me who I am but um I feel like if I could change one thing I would change um feeling insecure about like um my passion and my music and like the choices I made like and stuff like and not feeling like ashamed or scared of like what people might think and just like really knowing that like if I could go back and tell myself now who was, was like scared and like like, oh, I can't do this. I don't want to do it. Like, I'm just like, everyone's going to judge me. Like, I would be like, go for it. Like, you don't have anything to worry about. Like, it's worth it. It's going to be great. What do you consider your greatest achievement to date? Um, Definitely doing a music video with the Paranoids was one of the things that I really, really enjoyed because um, we've been, like, listening to them since we were, like, 13, 14 years old. And, like, we find like we actually like got like hit up by like the, the lead singer yeah. girl and like we like did a um music video with her and like we were literally just like it was a really cool yeah. opportunity for that to happen so we actually booked the show with them today which is so exciting because they're like probably my favorite like like we current band of like all yeah. time they're like, definitely like a role model like definitely big yeah, inspirations like, for I'm, us we're yeah we're playing with them on November 15th at the bootleg so for their release party which is like a huge deal so I'm like I'm so excited the pros and cons of social media for you I really love how you can get yourself out there it's a really good thing to just make yourself more known and have more of like more of a fan base I feel like it's a lot easier today for social media like 
to like get yourself out there because like back then like if you wanted to get noticed you'd have to go on like tours and you'd have to like record but now everyone can record everyone can post everyone can be like influencers and everything so that's kind of the thing I don't really like about it but it also in a way really helps the same thing I really think it's kind of like it's a really good platform to like launch yourself on and like have your business or have like but also at the same time it's like this contrived like lot of it it's just like fake and like I always try to like stay true to like my weird like goofy like strange self instead of just like trying to be like oh my god like my matcha latte like no offense if anyone I love matcha lattes but like I don't know like I just feel like sometimes it gets really like clouded with a bunch of like everyone wants to fit in to do this like how many likes how many like this how many that how many followers how many retweets like it's just like I like it for like just putting myself out there yeah. as like an individual versus like oh my god I want to post this to get like this attention or that attention like that you just post yeah. it to post it yeah I just post to like, it's kind of like a little photo album in a yeah, way I don't really see fun. it as like honestly I don't really like social media but that's like really good for like where because today that's how you base it off mm. of like that's yeah, how you make it that's how you promote it how important is fame to you and could you live without it I am definitely not in this for fame at all because I mean that's definitely something like oh wow like I made it but in a way it's like I don't that's not what I care about. That's not what I'm in this for. I'm in it for me. That's like, I just love playing music. I love putting myself out there. I just love the feeling of being on stage and having people like listen and dance and sing and like having everyone kind of connect in a way. And like fame is like the last thing I'm worried about or thinking about, but it'd be a really cool opportunity to like, yeah, for that to happen. But I just, you I'm just like, it? yeah, definitely. Okay. And you? Yeah, I could definitely like, for sure live without it because like not experiencing it right now I just want to put my music out there and like be an artist and express myself and like people like enjoy it but like it's just like all like God's decision like I'm down to go all the way but like it doesn't matter I just like I'm happy where I'm at so whatever if you could collaborate with any legendary musician living or dead who would it be we already kind of did it honestly for me um we just did a collab with uh, Todd from Sublime, the horn player from Sublime, mm. and uh, Adrian Young, the drummer from mm. No Doubt, and they're actually producing a whole album with us, and we're doing like a bunch of collabs and like writing music together, so I feel like, for me, like I love Sublime, I love No Doubt, I look up to both of those people so much, and it's really like cool to already see that happening for me, so I'm already content, I'm already happy. <laughs> That's so. gonna that's gonna do really well for you guys. I would definitely want to collab with like Amy Winehouse. She's definitely like, I'm like obsessed with her. She was amazing. I'm so sad, but like, yeah. Or definitely like, Queen would be cool. Mm -hmm. Well, you could still <laughs> hang out with Brian May and and Roger Taylor. That could happen. Yeah. Definitely. You believe there's a hell? Yes. Okay. Is Hitler rotting there? Definitely rotting there. It's a little stash is scorching right now what is your greatest extravagance sushi and clothes i would love some shoes even though i have so many like i'll, I'll wear shoes once and like never want to wear them again i'll just want to keep getting shoes like i have a shoe obsession what is the most unselfish thing you've ever done for somebody um one time like me and my friends like did school and like all the parents were like strict and stuff and I just took all the blame for it. The most unselfish thing I've ever done. If I can't think of one, does that make me really selfish? <laughs> How about when you got me watered out one time when I was thirsty? <laughs> sure. Okay, what you did was definitely unselfish. Yeah. When you sacrifice yourself for your friends and you take the heat, that is unselfish. What do you love most about connecting with your fans? Just people who like come out to see our shows and like they love our musical, they'll be like, Oh, like I play this like when I'm cleaning my room or like I love this. I made yeah. like I made like a collage to your song or like I learned how to play this on the guitar. Yeah. Like I like I made like a parody or like a melody of your songs yeah. and I'm just like, Oh my god, like that is like the coolest thing ever. Like like when people buy merch or just like come and even talk to us after shows. It's yeah. just like the most amazing, like special thing ever. Just like 
I don't know. It's just so cool to me. It's always cool to see like a familiar face in the crowd when we're like playing, Mm -hmm. or like someone like singing like your lyrics and like someone asks for the set list. That is like the best ever because it's so cute. They're just like, "Can I be set list?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course." Yeah. When we played at Soma with the Grins, like it was really like breathtaking like we would like walk yeah. by like the backstage thing and like every time we walk by people would be like oh my god like screaming like our names and stuff like scene, the, we have a fan base the down there that's really people. really nice do you believe evil exists and if so how would you define it yes. um yes i do i don't like mess with like tarot readings or like Seances. all the ouija board and i do believe like there is dark magic and evil out there Definitely. I just feel like I don't mess with it because like God is in control. So don't look to other things for that. Like, especially like getting your cards or palms read. I just feel like God is in control. You shouldn't be like looking about like what your future is and just like look to him and pray to him about it. That's yeah. How I cool. see and it. Yeah. You agree with that? Yeah. Or do you like the direction the world's going in today? No, no. Girls, what's next for you? Modeling music. We're going to take that as far as we can go. And just really give it all, you know. Yeah. We're, we're putting everything Definitely. just out there. Throwing it all out there. We're coming out with new music soon. We're writing a lot. We're jamming a lot. We're playing shows. We have like some new songs coming out soon. Yeah. Playing shows. Trying Living to get a the tour dream, together. Honestly. I couldn't yeah, be happier. Yeah, especially, it's yeah. It's literally everything I want to do. blessed. Thank Good. You. <laughs> and I want you guys to talk in twin speak to yourselves and say the blaring out with Eric Blair show is the best show ever. Tong Hong Yi Bong Long Gai Rong Gai Nong Gong O Yu Tong Wang Gai Tong Hong Yi Rong Gai Kong Bong Long Gai Rong I Song Hong Go Wang I Song Tong Hong Yi Bong Yi Song Tong Shang Hong Go Wang I Nong Tong Hong Yi Wang Go Rong Long Dong I forgot what you said. It's great. I love it. Thank you so much for being on the show. You guys rock. This is the blaring out with Eric Blair show with Strawberry Army signing off. The blaring out show.